Now here's a picture that I'm going to show you some fun things in Photoshop with. Um, now I did do some raw processing on this image. This is actually the straight out of camera shot, which is stellar. Um, but I, I did do some, some raw processing on this image um, to kind of get it to here. Um, mainly I wanted her skin to look a lot better. You can see the skin tone in the before is very gray and blue. Um, so I definitely wanted to adjust the white balance. And again, the reason for that, that's only gonna help me with my black and white sliders um, in Photoshop. Uh, so I did do some, um, I did do some raw processing on this one. I'm going to hit Y and then Z to zoom out. Um, obviously, if I was leaving this in color, I would work more on the grass and desaturate and darken it. Um, but main, the main reason for turning this one to black and white um, instead of leaving it is I don't really care for the purple. I could certainly change the color of it, but um, color really isn't adding to the story. Um, and I think it would kind of make for a fun black and white image and that's actually how I initially edited this one. So we're going to open this one up in Photoshop as a color image. Normally I would convert it before going to Photoshop. This would be um, the Lightroom black and white and you saw how I pulled on my histogram and made this look totally different. Um, so it's very gray right now so that's not ideal. So I pulled the color image into Photoshop. Now there are a number of different ways that you can convert to black and white in Photoshop. You can add a gradient map, you can desaturate, but by far the best method for converting to black and white is with a black and white adjustment layer. And the reason is because you get access to these black and white mix sliders like you had in Lightroom. Um, especially if I'm wanting to darken the grass um, or brighten or darken different parts of my image. So to adjust the grass, I will um, play with my greens and yellows as you can see here. Um, her shirt was purple, um, so what I could do is I can make her shirt lighter. Um, the flower in her hair was purple, um, so I can adjust that a little bit. And you, So you can see you can adjust the different colors um, in the image and you have access to that. If you um, use a different method, method, access to these wonderful sliders here. One thing I'm gonna do because comparison is so important to me, I stress that in the first lesson is I'm actually going to create a new background layer because this background layer, um, if I were to do comparisons in my editing, it's in color. So it's not helping me too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on this little um, key lock here. Um, it's going to give me that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my black and white layer and I'm going to create a new pixel layer, a stamp visible pixel layer by pressing shift, alt option, command E on my Mac, and so there's my new pixel layer. What I'm now gonna do is go to Layer, New, Background from Layer, and that's gonna be my new background. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut um, these off. What I could do is I could delete them um, by simply Command clicking and pulling them down to my trash. I could do that. Um, I could Command G to group them and then turn them off um, and then add additional layers above this. As I mentioned in the caption, adding light and contrast is very important to me in my editing. I want my subject to have light and contrast in the image and I want everything else to not have light and contrast in the image. So let's take a look at some different ways that we can do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and selectively add light and contrast to my subject in particular to her face. So I'm going to hit Z for zoom and I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on her face. I want to make sure that um, I have her face here that I'm working on. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. I'm going to use my bracket key um, to reduce the size of my brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Q for quick mask mode. I'm going to note that my black brush is selected on top. Um, I want my flow to be 50%, my opacity 100. To change my flow, I'm going to hit Shift 5 to change it to 50. And now I'm going to brush on her face a little bit here. Because I want to brighten up her face and add some contrast to it. I'm a little bit sloppy. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Q again to make my selection in quick mask mode. You can see the marching ants indicate where my selection is. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to 
click to add a levels layer. So the step is I have to first have my selection, then I'm going to click levels. Now you can see over here in the mask, do you see that little white spot? Um, that's where I have selected, and now I can selectively adjust only that area of my image. So if I hit Command minus minus a little bit, so you can see a little bit um, zoomed out a little bit, you can see how I'm only affecting that part of the image. Usually what I want to do is I want to touch part of the histogram. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this guy right here, and then I'm going to bring um, the dark part of my image, and I'm going to add some contrast. Now you see that darkened quite a bit, so watch that. So it was kind of hazy, and now I'm going to move that in to touch the histogram. Now it's got a lot more contrast, and then I'm going to take my midtone slider guy here, and I'm going to move him to brighten her up a little bit. So here's the change that that made. This is before, this is after. I've added light and contrast to my subject's face. I'm going to hit Command-0 to go back to the full frame view. Um, now what if I want to reduce light and contrast to parts of my image, um, for example the foreground here? What I would then do to enter quick, quick mask mode is I'd hit B for my brush tool. I'm going to increase my brush pretty big. Um, I'm going to hit Q to enter quick mask mode and I'm just going to brush all of this. Remember your black brush needs to be selected and your flow should be 50, opacity 100%, and I'm just going to go like that. Um, now I'm going to hit Q to make my selection. I'm going to tap on Levels, um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this there, but I'm going to move this guy in here, and you can see how that darkened the foreground. I can also adjust my midtones, brighter or darker. I think I'm going to leave them kind of right there, so you can see the adjustment that that made before, after, before, after. Now it did add some contrast, but I did want to darken that up a little bit. Um, so if you wanted to reduce the contrast on that layer, you could open that up again, um, and you could simply move this guy over there. And so that would reduce some of the contrast, but still darken the foreground of the image so that your eye is immediately drawn to the subject. Another way to add light to your subject is through a curves layer. I'm going to go ahead and select my curves, and I want to go ahead and darken the background. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down on the shadows here a little bit, and that um, does a global adjustment to the entire image. Um, but you can see I've got my mask selected here. I'm going to go over to my gradient tool right here. I've got my radial gradient selected here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out, I'm going to start at the center of my subject and just draw out however big I want. I can make it big, I can make it small. I think I'm going to go right here and it does fade it nicely. Um, now you can see that it concealed that adjustment on the outside and reveals it in the middle. I don't want that. Um, so what I could do is hit Command I to invert um, or before I made that change, see how it has reverse right here? I could also reverse that. Um, and you can see the change over here in the gradient. Um, but it's easy to fix after the fact by doing a Command I to invert the layer mask. And you can see the change. It created a vignette here, which results in a little bit more light on my subject, and the background is a little bit darker. You can also do the reverse of that. I can add a curves layer. I can actually take the midtones and maybe bump those just a little bit. Um, I have my mask selected here. I'm going to go over to my gradient. I've got a radial gradient. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw out from my subject. And again, that gives the same exact but opposite um, effect of putting light on my subject. So you can see it's, it's brightening her up without affecting the background at all. You can also add radial gradients um, to create a, a sunshine effect or a, a sun flare effect. I'll show you that. I'm going to add a new curves layer. I'm going to go ahead and lift up right here. I'm going to go ahead and I've got my mask selected. I'm going to add my gradient. Um, you can either do a, a linear gradient where you give an overall, let me just show you that. Um, you can add an overall lightness here. 
You can see how that overall brightened the top of the image. Um, or what I could do is with my gradient tool selected, I can do a radial gradient and again pull down and that'll be more of a circular effect. And you can see the mask here, what that looks like. And that just gives a little bit more of a sunshine, if you will, or a sun flare effect. And you can make it bigger like that. See over here on the mask what that looks like. You can turn it off and on and see how that affects the image as well. Now if I want to reduce contrast um, on the background and foreground of this image, there are two ways that I can do that. I can add haze by using a levels layer. So I'm going to tap on my levels here. Um, for output levels, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to play up here. I'm going to go to output levels and I'm going to type in I don't know, 10 or 12, let's just go, let's go 12 so that we can see that adjustment a little bit more strongly. I, I normally wouldn't go that strong, but just so you can see it. Now it adds a haze. This is the same effect as the dehaze slider in Lightroom. So you can see the haze that's added here. Um, I want to brush that off of my subject because I want to keep the contrast on her. So I've got my mask selected. I'm going to hit B for brush. I have my black brush selected. I'm going to use my left bracket key to reduce it. Um, my flow is set to 50, opacity 100. That's kind of what I want. And I'm going to go ahead and brush that haziness off of my subject. I'm going to hit the backslash key to just see what I did here and I can kind of add a little bit more if I want to. Okay, I'm going to hit backslash again so I can see where that mask is and then I'm going to turn it off and on. And you can see what it did is it brightened and it also added a haze to my background but I maintained the contrast on my subject. The other way that I can add um, kind of a matte effect which re reduces the contrast is with a curves layer. Now there's a couple different ways to do a matte effect. I use a curves layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little point at the um, bottom left and I'm going to lift it up. Now you can see what the output numbers are here. Usually I would go up to an output of again 10 to 12. So here would be like 10. And you can see the effect that that has, a serious matte effect. I'm going to notch that back down. Let's go 12 or 14. Let's go to 12 so you can see what that looks like. Um, and again, I want to brush it off of my subject. Here's what that has done to the image. But I want to maintain contrast on her. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the mask I use down here because I've already painted that on. I'm going to hold down Alt Option and I'm just going to pull that up and drop it right there. So now I have the same exact mask on both of these and I can go ahead and see the adjustment there. The other thing you can do is you can certainly group layers together and then add a mask to the group of layers. Um, so that's something that you can do as well. So now what we're going to do is see how we're doing. Um, so I'm going to go down to my background layer. I'm going to hit Alter Option and I'm going to click that eyeball on and off. Oops. So here's what the image looks like before and after. Before and after. So we're maintaining light and contrast on my subject while reducing it um, on the outer parts of the image. I think what I'm going to do, I feel, like, I feel like this is a little bit too bright for me, so I'm going to darken the outside again. I'm just going to pull down a little bit there. I'm going to use my radial gradient here to kind of draw outward from my subject. And again, I'm going to reverse that. And again, we've darkened the outside of the image. The other thing you can do is you can add a pixel layer to do some dodging and burning. Um, so I'll do that now. I'm going to hit Shift, Alt, Option, Command, E to add a pixel layer. Now we can dodge and burn. You can't dodge and burn on a transparent layer. You do need to have a pixel layer. So to dodge and burn, I'm going to hit the O shortcut on my um, keyboard, or you can use this guy here and you can hit Shift O. Let me use my dodge tool right now. I'm going to increase the brush size using my bracket key. Can you see that right there? And now I can dodge over, let's say, the flowers here and I'm dodging my highlights. You can see that here. 
can even do that a little bit on my subject. Um, if I wanted to burn, I could then hit Shift O to go to my burn. And now I can burn, let's say, the shadows. I'm going to increase my brush. And I can burn the shadows. I can do that on my subject if I want to. And then let's see what that has done. So I'm going to turn it off and on, off and on. So you can see the contrast that the dodge and burn has had on the image. Some other adjustment layers that you can play with. One thing I do is I warm up my black and whites. Um, you can do that through a color balance layer, a levels layer. Um, I'll show it to you in a levels layer. I'm going to go to my RGB channel and go to red. And in my output layer, output level, I usually put in like two. Um, two is pretty hard to see. It's very subtle. See how subtle that is? So let me show it to you. I'm going to double tap that. Let me show it to you a little bit stronger so you get my, get my drift. I'm going to hit 10. See how pink that is now? So you can see the difference there. I obviously don't want it that strong. I'm going to go to 10, 2. And so that just warms it up just a little bit. You can also add contrast um, through the brightness and contrast adjustment layers. Um, you can see what that looks like. You can just tap that to add a little bit more contrast if you want to. It comes with a mask, so you can go ahead and use your gradient or brush it off of your subject if you'd like. Um, let's see, your exposure um, adjustment layer. You can um, do some fun things with this gamma correction. I learned this from Erica Eldridge Photos or er Erica Bowden. Um, what you can do is you can nudge that a little bit to the right um, and it, that has a really cool effect on the image as well. So those are some different things that you can do for fun when editing black and white images in Photoshop. Let's see what these changes look like. I'm going to go to my background layer here, hold down Alt or Option, and I'm just going to turn that on and off. And you can see the dramatic effect that it had on the image. Hey again, it's Amanda. I wanted to show you three ways you can add an artistic blur in Photoshop. First thing that you need to do is to create a new pixel layer. Now as you've noticed, I haven't flattened any of my layers. I never do. Um, I will only flatten after I have saved all the layers as a PSD file because more often than not I find something that I need to fix and it's a whole heck of a lot easier to find the actual layer that I need to fix or that I need to reduce the opacity or whatever I need to do than starting from scratch. So I learned that lesson the hard way. I keep all of my layers and I only um, flatten them after I save the PSD file and then I go ahead and do my resizing and sharpening for wherever those pictures end up. So let's create a new pixel layer as I've shown before. I'm going to use a shortcut on my Mac. It's Shift Alt Option Command E. And that's going to create a pixel layer, or what's called a stamp visible layer. It's going to basically merge all the layers below it into one layer. So there's no change that's occurred. And if I blur this layer and I don't like it, I can always toss it out. So I'm going to show you your first blur option. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur. And let's go to radial blur. You should play with these. There's a lot of fun things that you can do. So the most common radial blur is going to be the spin blur. Um, and as far as amount, don't go nuts with this. You can always lower the opacity. But let's see what it looks like at 10. I feel like I usually use this at maybe 6 or 8. Um, you can always um, change up the quality as well. That way you don't see as much of the lines. So I can go ahead and tap on best quality here. So I'm going to let that run and you'll see the resulting effect. This is the perfect image to do it on because my subject is centered. So the composition um, is fairly important for doing this type of a spin radial blur. Okay, so you can see that even at 10, that's a pretty strong effect. So here's before and after. That's pretty strong. One thing I'm gonna do right away is I'm going to put on a layer mask. I'm gonna go down here, 
tap on my layer mask. If I wanted that black, I would tap the layer mask down here while holding down my Alt Option key. Um, and that way it'll give me a black mask. But I want a white mask because I want to reveal most of it and I'm going to conceal it in the middle. I'm going to go to my gradient tool. I have my gradient tool selected here and I'm just going to draw out a little bit and see what happens. I'm going to draw out a little bit more. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Okay, um, now again, that's way too strong, I think. It's a little too funky for me. I'm going to hover my mouse here, my little cursor, above the word opacity, and I'm going to um, press and hold on my trackpad and just reduce that until I think it looks a little more normal. So I'm at 60% I'm at right now. So let's see, before, after, before, after. It's still a little bit strong, but eh, kind of makes a cool effect. So that is the radial spin blur. Okay, now I'm going to show you one of my favorite types of artistic blurs. This is one that I use often. I'm going to make another pixel layer, shift, alt, option, command, E. I've turned off the um, other blur layer that I made here because you may want to play with it and see what you like best. So here's my new pixel layer. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Radial Blur again, but now I'm going to select Zoom. Last time we did Spin, now I'm going to do Zoom. I'm going to leave the amount at 10 so you can see it, but again, I'd rather it be more subtle than not. I don't actually want people to know that I'm adding a blur in my editing. I'd rather people think that it just kind of looks cool, or maybe I used a, a fun lens, or maybe I just had really cool lens compression. Okay, so you can see the effect that had. I think it looks cool. I love the zoom blur, um, so you can see the difference there. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to retitle this one zoom, and I'm going to retitle this layer spin so that I'm able to compare and contrast and see what I like best. I'm going to go ahead and add, again, a mask on this. I'm going to go to my um, radial gradient, and again, I'm going to draw out from her because I don't really want that on my subject, so I'm just going to kind of zoom it out that way. Okay, and let's see. This is before, after, before, after. Now, one thing I'm missing is these little flowers that I really love. So I'm going to um, tap on my mask. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool, increase my brush, make sure that my black brush is selected. I'm going to hit X. And then I'm going to go ahead and I want to bring some of these flowers back in. I don't want to lose too much of the flowers here. So, okay, um, and my flow is at 50. It probably should have been a little lower than that. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift 2 to make it 20. X to get my white brush, and I'm going to paint a little bit because that was just a little bit too strong. It looks a little too strong to me. Okay, so here's before and here's after. It just kind of gives it a fun, funky effect. All right, let's do the last one. I'm going to make another pixel layer, Shift, Alt, Option, Command, E, and I'm going to teach you a blur technique that I used from Tiffany Kelly to simulate a tilt shift effect or a lens baby effect. Um, so it kind of almost looks like it's being free lens, which is really cool. I'm going to go to Filter, and now I'm going to go to Blur Gallery, and I'm going to go to Tilt Shift. I definitely recommend that you play with all of these different filters because you can get some really fun effects. So this is the way that it works. Anything in this middle area between the solid bars is going to be in sharp focus, as it should be. Anything between the um, solid bar and the dashed bar above and below is going to gradually be getting more blurry and then anything outside the dashed lines is going to actually have the full effect of the blur. So the first thing I'm going to do that I always do is I'm going to um, I'm actually going to move this by pulling on this and whenever I do a tilt shift I actually leave it sort of tilted like that. Um, now I do want her in focus, so I'm going to move this guy this way. Um, and I don't mind if part of her backside here is a little bit blurry. Um, and so you can see here, this is in full focus. We've got a little bit of gradual blur on either side of her. Um, I may actually move this side in. You can move these bars around a little bit. And then I can decide over here how much blur I want. So right now it's at 15 pixels. I can, um, I just tapped it to go up to 23 pixels. 
You can tap it a little bit more and you can see the effect that that has. Now it's looking a little bit too strong to me at 33 pixels, so I'm going to back down off of that. Um, so I just want it to be very subtle. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm going to click OK. You can also check this box that says high quality and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, so let's look at the before and after. This is before and after, before. It gives it a subtle lens baby or free lensing look to it. I also do want to bring back those flowers over there, so I'm going to add a mask. I'm going to hit B for brush tool, X to get my black brush selected. My flow is at 20%, which is good, and I'm just going to paint over a little bit um, over those flowers. So again, this is before. And this is after. And then you can see how you like these other ones. I think I like the zoom the best. The zoom is just a fun effect for me. The spin is a little funky. I think it looks a little fake, to be honest with you. So what I might do is select this layer and again, push that opacity down a little bit further. It just looks a little fake. Um, and I definitely don't want that look. So maybe this is a little bit better. But if I was gonna choose which one I would actually use to post, I probably would use the zoom. Yeah, I think I would use the zoom. I think the, the edge zoom looks kinda nifty. Um, so I think that's a very cool effect. You know what, why don't I show you what I would do um, to go ahead and prep this for Instagram since I'm since I'm at it anyway. Um, I've got all my layers here. Um, I actually already went ahead and I went and file save as or shift Command S. Um, so I have saved this as a PSD layered file. So if I need to go back to it, I can. At this point, what I would do is flatten my image. I did create a custom shortcut in Photoshop. Command F to flatten. I'm going to hit OK. The way that I created that custom shortcut, I can um, speak to that if someone wants to know how to do it. It's really easy. But I found that um, I didn't like having to go up to my menu. I think I went to layer maybe flatten somewhere, yeah, here. Um, so I created my own custom shortcut, so you would need to do that, and I highly recommend doing that. Um, now what I'm gonna do is resize my image. I'm gonna go ahead and go to image, image size. Um, you can see the height and width here are full size. Um, for Instagram, I use 1080 pixels, so for the width, 1080. And it, uh, these are locked, so it goes ahead and keeps my crop composition. Um, so the height is only going to be 720, but I do want 1080 for the width. I'm going to click OK. Um, and then you can see here that's at 30%. If I Command 0, it brings it up. And then I can Command minus. And you can see this percentage up here. This is 100%. This is the actual size that will be on Instagram. It's a little large for most screens, but this is the recommended pixel dimensions for Instagram posting. From here, if I wanted to, I could sharpen it. Um, I don't really need to, but if I were gonna sharpen it, I would go to Filter, and then Other, High Pass, um, and now with this high pass filter box, you can see what's showing through is what would be um, sharpened. So I'm going to take this radius and I'm going to reduce it because I don't want that much sharpened. So let's say I want that sharp. Can you see that a little bit? And I can actually place this box right over her so you can see it in the preview box as well. That looks fine to me. Um, I'm going to hit OK and it's going to sharpen the edges of what's showing through in this gray overlay. I'm gonna um, go to my blend mode. I'm gonna go to soft light, okay? And now let me hit Z for zoom so you can see what's happened. So this is if I turn it off, on, off, on. It's quite sharp. I'm gonna command zero to go back. Command minus to go out even more. That's a little sharp for me, so I'm gonna hover over my opacity and I'm gonna drag that down a little bit because that is a little bit too sharp for what I want. So maybe I'll leave it there. That looks okay. All right, so now if I'm gonna save this for Instagram, I'm just gonna go ahead and Shift Command S. I'm gonna go into my Dropbox. If I have a folder that I'm using, which I don't right now, but if I wanted to put a folder, I could put March 2017. Um, I could rename this if I wanted to. If you're using this also for your blog, I highly re recommend changing the file name to Photographers in 
Gwinnett County. Um, that's my keyword for my website. And then I would change this to either JPEG if I'm going to also use this file for my blog. But since I'm probably going to just use this for Instagram, I don't know, maybe we'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a PNG. Um, for my blog, it only accepts JPEGs, but Instagram um, allows PNG files. So I'll save it as a PNG so that it's even better quality. And now when I open it up on my phone, it'll be in my Dropbox folder. I can export it to my camera roll and post it to Instagram. Thank you again so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.